Hi guys, welcome to our channel, Minimalist Digital Nomad. My name is Eric and uh, behind the camera is Marcella. And today we're going to tell you something about our home, about our van, uh, which we're living in. And we're going to tell you something about the systems, uh, how we've built them uh, to go off grid and to suit all our needs. This is our van and uh, we've got some question of, questions about what kind of van it is. It's a Renault Master, length 2, height 2. Uh, it's not the biggest van there is, but it's also not really small and it's big enough for us. We can stand up straight, which was important, uh, an important thing for us. And furthermore, it's short enough to be able to park in a parking spot because we want to be able to park in uh, cities like Amsterdam, which can be uh, quite narrow. So that's why we chose this van. Uh, furthermore, it has 100 horsepower and it used to be an old work van. And uh, yeah, we've made it into a camper van which shoots all our, need, all our needs. Another important thing about the van, it has a load capacity of 4,500 kilos, which is important if you're going to build a van. I've done a, I've done a lot of research on a, on a lot of vans, and it uh, well it turned out to be the Renault Master we chose. Uh, we were also looking at a Fiat Ducato, which is also a great van. It's a little bit wider, and it's more commonly used for. Uh, for camper vans, but we couldn't find a suitable second-hand one, so we went with the Renault Master, which came at a very good price. So, what did we want to do with the van? That was quite important. Um, we wanted to go off-grid, uh, and also we wanted to be able to travel uh, on gravel roads. So we want to go, go uh, off-track a little bit, but not four-wheel drive. We've lo looked into that, but then. Yeah, you need a Toyota Land Cruiser or, any, or something and then it doesn't come with the space you have in a van. So in the end we chose a van, two wheel drive and we were like, yeah, in Europe, which we're traveling with this van is uh, good enough with a two wheel drive van and uh, yeah, we came, uh, that's why we bought this one. So what kind of systems do we need? Well, uh, we wanted water, electricity, hot water if possible, heating so we can take it to the south of uh, Europe but also to the north of Europe or a skiing area. And, um, to have electricity everywhere you want to go off grid you need uh, solar power so that's what we started out with. So electricity, come with me. hit all our systems pretty good I think um, but the electricity home is here in this cabinet you'll find all the uh, electricity components we used except for the solar panel of course um, how we went to determine what kind of system we need we checked what we actually wanted in the van so uh, lighting uh, ventilation. Um, we wanted to charge our laptops, we wanted to charge our phones, stuff like that. Um, then we have, uh, we wanted a 12 volt system and a 230 volt system. So this all determines uh, what kind of system you need, what kind of components, and uh, how big they should be. Uh, so we made a list of all these things, what we use, uh, how many kilowatts they use in a day or how many watts. So you can determine what kind of battery you need. Well, our battery, 220 amp hours, uh, is here. And when you select the battery, you kind of know what kind of components you need to charge that battery. If you have the battery, you can determine uh, what kind of uh, system you need to charge the battery. This is very important. Well, we had limited space uh, on top of the van for the, for the solar panel. So what we did is we chose one big panel of 320 watts, it's an LG panel, um, which charges this battery. And it charges the battery through 
a uh, smart solar charge controller of Victron. If you look closely, you can see that now it's in bulk stage, so it's charging the battery. This is a smart controller, which means uh, you can also log in with your phone to see uh, all kind of stats about uh, charging, which is really interesting. So what if there's no sun for like a week, you know, then you have a problem, right? Well, if there's a grid, then we can also connect to the grid. We put in a charge controller or a battery charger actually, which you can just connect to the grid. On the outside of the van is a connection. You can hook, hook up to a local grid and we can still use our power. We also have a little safety in this uh, system. So if we use a, two, a 230 volts system, it has a safety. So when we want to work outside of the van, it's still safe. Um, because we have a, yeah, I don't know the English term really, but it's a, like a floating net. Normally in a house you have one of these big pins, like 10 meters in the ground, which makes sure if something happens, the energy flows into the ground. Well, that's not really possible when you're on wheels. So we have this system, it costs a few hundred bucks, uh, but it was already in the van as well. So great feature. Last but not least, um, there's some 12 volt connections in the back. So we made sure we can still reach that if we take out the battery. And there's a shunt which is connected to the battery monitor, which I'm gonna tell you more about. Last thing about the electricity system is the battery monitor. Um, it shows us how much power we still have left in the battery. And it also shows us what kind of power we use, how much uh, hours we have left when we keep on going like this, um, and how much the solar panel uh, yeah, well, is charging the battery. So this is the battery monitor and it shows us the voltage of the battery right now which is 12.5 um, yeah can be a bit higher but we used a lot of power then if we press this button you see the voltage right now uh, which is being charged uh, the amps and this is all because of the solar panel watts it has 10 watts now the solar panel is charging uh, the battery and it's in full shadow right now so that's pretty good still number of amp hours we're using well none and it says 100% full and infinite hours which means we can go on into to infinity right now as we're using power right now but we're not using anything so and we're back to volt so as I said earlier uh, you want to be able to use as much stuff on 12 volts as possible because you're gonna have losses when you use the 230 volt system. So we have a ventilator uh, max fan on 12 volt, which is in the roof obviously. A 12 volt refrigerator of 110 liters and our LED lighting is 12 volt. And we're, what we're gonna change is that we can charge our phones with 12 volts. If you want to live off grid, you need some water, right? So we have a sink in our van and we have an outside shower. A little bit more about the water system. All of the equipment for the water is in this cabinet and the rest is under the van. I emptied this cabinet so it would be a little bit easier to show you guys. So just show you, so you know. So this is the cabinet. Here we store our pots, pots and pans normally. Uh, so, but I took them out. Here you can see the drains for the sink and also the hot and the warm water for, uh, for the sink, for the, for the faucet. I can take this up a little bit so you can, I can show you guys a little bit better what is under here. The heater provides us with uh, uh, well, heating for the van itself but it also has a 10 liter boiler uh, which can uh, be heated up to 60 degrees. Also in the back there's a few valves. And um, I would change this the next time because uh, they're a bit hard to reach, but uh, we don't have to reach in really often. One of the valves makes sure we can um, fill the water tanks with water from the grid, so we can actually go off grid. And the other one uh, is if we're connected to the grid, it can uh, well uh, fill our system so we have water from the grid directly. One other thing in this cabinet about water. Um, well, there's two uh, pipes going to the sink and two pipes going to the 
outside shower in the back, which I'm going to show you now. The outside shower. We wanted to be able to take a shower, but we didn't have space in the van to build a whole shower cabinet. So we have it here. So I'm going to open it up. And here we can connect our shower. And take it out. So it's connected. Well, normally I would put it on right now, but then I'll get wet, which I don't want right now. So I'll take it off again and show you how it works. To go off grid, we need water, obviously. And we put our water tanks under the van. So we had custom water tanks made, which fit exactly under the van, which I'm gonna show you now. You can hardly see them, which is uh, well, how it's supposed to be. They have a little edge, so you can uh, yeah, you don't really look into them. And uh, another thing is they're quite high up, which means we still have a lot of good ground clearance. A lot of camper vans uh, we come across don't have a lot of ground clearance. Uh, we, we've noticed so far that it's been good that we've done this because we can still go on gravel roads with a lot of rocks and stuff. There's four water tanks. And the reason we have four is because there's all kind of, well, kind of compartments under the van. So we couldn't make one water tank. And all these four water tanks, for that reason, are connected. And the water tanks are then connected to the pump. And the pump is a sure flow pump, which works the way uh, if the pressure drops, it starts pumping. Let's go to the other side. Welcome to the other side, the dark side. Now on this side, uh, we have the dirty water tanks. Yeah, there's only two tanks on this side and they're even higher up for some reason. Uh, but also, they fit nicely into the compartments. And all the water from the sink is transferred to these two tanks. And we can, uh, well, uh, empty them on specific places. Oh, the heating system. Uh, we haven't used it so far because we're in Italy and it's quite warm. Uh, but it makes sure we can go to Siberia if, if need be. Um, it's in this cabinet like I told you before. It's a Truma heater and it works on, on propane gas. Um, we've compared uh, going for diesel and for gas. And it turned out that gas was uh, more suitable for us. And the main reason was, was because we're also cooking on gas so we already need gas you can also cook on diesel but that's really expensive so we decided to go for gas and also for the heater which saved us a, 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 like a hundred I mean a thousand euros so yeah that's why we chose this system it's four kilowatts um, uh, running on gas and it can also run on electricity which is 1.8 kilowatts and you can even combine them so in total you would have six kilowatts well this van is very well insulated so it's way more than we need but this was kind of the smallest system and we wanted the option for electricity so if we don't have gas or we have let's say free electricity we can also go for electricity now on to the cooking which is also really important when you go off grid So this is the stove and it has three burners, which is great. And also it has a lid, which you can also close again. Um, so if you don't use it, you have space. And what is, what is great for the lid is that uh, stuff like flying up when you're cooking, let's say tomato, tomato sauce, uh, it stays on the glass, which you can easily clean. Um, it has three burners, which is great but it's next to the bed. So what we normally do is we only use the, the right situated one uh, so, you, so we don't have to uh, store the bed away. If we really want to cook um, like a magnific magnificent meal for eight people, then we'll use the three burners and we can store the bed away quite easily. So, but that's in our van tour video. So that's the cooking facility. So, oh, Eric, where's the gas tank? 
it's outside and I'm going to show you. Ah. Well, we've chose to put the gas tank outside because it would take up a lot of space inside of the van. And uh, we made a connection for the, uh, for the propane under the van, which is not situated ideally right now, but it's something we're going to change. So it's going to be sticking out on the side and we can easily uh, plug it in. Right now I have to go lay on my back and put it in. Well, this was a video about our systems. Are there things we would change or will change? Definitely yes. Uh, what these are, uh, we want to charge our phones on 12 volts because it takes up a lot of power right now, like 40 watts for uh, the, the inverter and 5 watts for a phone, so that's ridiculous. That's what we're going to change. And we're going to change uh, the gas uh, connection so it's easier to reach. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you want to know more about the systems we used, subscribe to our newsletter and you'll receive a PDF with all the information you need. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Ciao.